Hey, what's going on guys? Troy at Mountain Man Transfer here, and today we're revisiting the anatomy of a garage sale. Martin Man. Martin Man. Treasures. Welcome into the channel, guys. My name is Troy. I'm a reseller in Montana. I go to, in the summer, garage sales. I try to find things that I think are underpriced, and I buy them. Then bring them home, and I sell them online, and that's how I make my living now. And last summer, on a road trip, we took one garage sale video and sort of cut it into pieces, and I explained throughout the video my thinking process, why I was doing certain things. I called it anatomy of a garage sale, and people seem to like that. And so I actually came upon a garage sale here just the other day that uh, I didn't have great footage of because I didn't have my GoPro set up. I was actually driving to get some groceries for dinner and happened upon a garage sale. Pretty small, but it looked like there were a couple things in there that I was interested in once I stopped. And so I used my phone. I picked up some video footage and turned out as I was looking at stuff, I thought, you know what, this is another great opportunity to come back to how you negotiate, why you say certain things, why you do certain things. There's a lot of newer people that watch this channel, people that are just starting to get into reselling. And garage sales can be a little bit intimidating when you first start doing them. Uh, they can be a little bit scary. You're not sure exactly how that negotiation portion of the whole thing works. And so we're going to, in this video, take a little look at why I asked certain things and what I was thinking at the time. So we'll show you a little video. I'll break in, video, break in. Hopefully it doesn't get too mixed up in here, but let's give it a shot. Well, we're going to set that right there. It's making a mess. Okay. Are you just making room? Okay. So while I was walking in here, I I said hi. I said, you know, hey, how have things been going today? You sell some things, you get rid of some of the stuff. You know, it's it's just that small talk. You you got to introduce yourself, be friendly, have some small talk, right? And then right here, I'm asking, why are you having the garage sale? It's very important, especially if you think you're going to negotiate the price at the end, to find out. What's their motivation? Why are they doing this? Sometimes it's to make some extra money. In that case, they won't really negotiate a whole ton because they're trying to make some money at this thing. Sometimes they just want it gone. You know, hey, well, we were going to take it to Goodwill, but we thought, yeah, before we do, let's see if anybody else wants it. That means they're going to sell some stuff for cheap, right? They're just going to get rid of this anyway. They're trying to get a couple bucks, which means you can probably swing a good deal. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're, Cleared. we're moving soon, so we're just oh, okay. trying to get rid of some stuff. Moving in, in town, or are you no, we're making a big to, move? No, we're headed back to Colorado. Okay. My partner is he's from there, and he hasn't... He's never lived away from... So this is a situation where, hey, we're moving a couple states away, as it turns out. This is stuff they are... They're editing. They, they don't want to bring it with them, either because they have a smaller space, they just don't want to pack it, whatever the reason. Ultimately, they don't want to be packing this stuff up, putting it in a box, and moving it to their new home. So you get a little bit of an idea. There's an idea of motivation. That gives you a little bit of an edge when it comes to negotiating at the end of the whole thing. Let's go back to the sale. Would you do 10 on these boots? The black ones? Yeah. The, the yeah, on yeah. these guys? Yeah, absolutely. So here I'm making an initial buy. Now, if this is a sale where I can look around and think, I'm going to make a big pile of stuff. I just want to make a big pile of stuff very often. Because regardless of their motivation, people like to see, wow, you're taking a lot. That'll help you at the end, right? That's why very often you'll hear me say, hey, can I make a pile? You know, can I set things down and make a pile somewhere? that indicates to them, hey, this guy's going to buy a lot of stuff. 
and then they see it at the end, right? The pile is a big deal. In this case, there's not much there. There's not a ton that I'm interested in. I know I'm not going to make a lot of purchases, so I can't sort of impress with the amount of stuff that I'm taking out. So what I like to do is say, you know, what is the one thing that I can buy right now? I can get some cash in their hand. I've already made a purchase. We've already got a relationship from me walking in saying hi. We've had some small talk and now I've given them some money. I just think it helps if you're going to buy some more stuff after that to have already gotten some cash flowing. You might watch uh, American Pickers, they call it breaking the ice, right? Same idea. You want to get a little bit of cash in hand. Also important to note here, and I didn't get it on the camera, but she said several times as I started looking around, if you see a price and you're unsure or you want to make an offer, go ahead and do that. She said that in various forms multiple times. She's very motivated. She wants the stuff gone and she's willing to negotiate on price. That's why when I looked at the shoes, I thought, you know what? Let's get the cash in hand, but I'm going to test it out. I'm going to see how willing she is to make a deal. I'm going to make her a, a, a decent offer on these shoes and we'll see what she says. And now it's time for me to go back to the shelf where I'm the most interested, going to the stuff where I really kind of want to buy this stuff. So what's the story on our fish here? Look, it's a salmon of some kind, right? Yeah, so it definitely looks like just like your regular salmon. Yeah. Um, my partner got it um, from like a thrift store for like, I think it was like 25 bucks or something. Okay. Um, thought it was cool, it was great. So like, Yeah. Um, I think I put, how much should I put on there? Um, 10 bucks? 10 bucks, yeah. Figured if somebody wants it, great. If not, then we'll take it. Take it with it, you, but... yeah. He really liked it. That's cool. It's not necessarily my cup of tea, so. <laughs> but thought if, if it goes, it goes. If not, he still wants it. That gives me an idea of how connected they are to it. You know, do they want to get rid of this or is this something that they value or that they might want to keep? In this instance, they kind of valued it and they kind of wanted to keep it. So I knew that $10, that was firm. That, that was $10. That's not something I can bundle in with the rest of the stuff and try to get a better price on it, right? Because now we know this is something that they like. Now that question also helps you if it is something that you end up buying. Now you have a little bit of history for it, right? People like to buy things a lot of times with a story. I've actually had somebody buy a piece of Tupperware from me and they sent a message and said, hey, my girlfriend and I, we collect Tupperware. I'd love to know, do you have the story? Do you have the history of this piece? For Tupperware, right? And so it's very good to have sort of the history of different pieces if you can get it. So that's a little bit of a bonus there if you can get it. I had the history. I just also found out that this really wasn't something that I could bundle in with what I wanted and get a better deal. So now I'm going to ask the same question about the stuff that I want. What about the, like the skulls? Where'd those come from? Um, from the, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a place over in Anaconda. They've got pelts and skulls and okay. all sorts of things. Again, same thing. Um, something that my partner really wanted and liked, and he's like, here you go, see, it, see if they go, <laughs> otherwise I want them. I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> all right, so I have a little bit of the history of it, where they got it, and now I know they kind of like this stuff too, right? She didn't have that same sort of, we both love it. It was, he loves this stuff. So this is one of the, this is his thing. Maybe, maybe there's a little bit of wiggle room there. Do what you want. If I got, would you do me a deal if I got both of them? Yeah. How much you want? If you can at all help it, never give the price. Let them give you the first number. Oh, I don't know. what. How much do you want to get rid of them and not tell him? I would let them go for, I don't think you'd want them to go for less than 30. Together. for 30 for the set yeah so that's a fair deal we got a little bit off there but i want to try and make it a little bit better so i'm going to continue to try to find some stuff to put in a bundle i'm going to try and make a little mini pile Howdy! no mini pile i knocked those down and then i was having the worst time putting them back up oh, so i thought i'm gonna set them here be before i keep knocking them on the floor We're all good. and then what is this guy 
that's a beaver or a badger. A pelt, badger. Um, and he wanted for twenty for that. So. So what if we added that in there like, then? I could let it go. Here, let me just call. So now I've added another item to that, trying to say, well, can I get a better discount right now? Now let's throw a third item in. And you can. she almost gives me one. She almost throws it out, but then she realizes, you know what? This is not mine. I, I can't really make a great deal on it like I think she wanted to because it wasn't hers. And so she had to make a call. It's like, I know he'll be mad at me. He'll ask. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Hey, um, so this guy is wondering if he gets the badger pelt and both skulls, how much would you be willing to let him go for? Right now, if they all add up together from what you told me, it would be 20, 40, 50, 55. But if he took all, all three of them, how much would you be willing to let him go for? That's it? Otherwise, you want them? Okay, that, that's fine. I just didn't want to give them for less. So, okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. Wait. He said he wants them, um, unless if you can pay 50 for all three. 50 for the three? Yeah. So, I lost my bundle deal there, right? I could actually hear him a little bit on the phone, and I, I, I knew what the number was uh, before she told me. I, I could hear it from him, and basically we were paying full price for everything. We were getting $5 off on the whole thing. And I wanted to make it a little bit better. It wasn't going to happen with his stuff, right? He's attached enough where he'll sell it if it sells, but otherwise he's going to keep it. So I had one last chance and I went to the hats. Uh, he was kind of protective of those. <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked when he handed it to me. He's like, I was like, really? You want to sell these? Uh, let's see. Would you tell you what? Would you do if we threw the trailheads hat in? Would you do fifty if we and throw in the hat? Absolutely. All right, I'll do that. I still got a better deal, right? I went to something that wasn't his, that she had full ability to negotiate on, right? Because he's got no say, this is something of hers, it's a women's hat. And we got added value, right? Of, you know what, we're gonna pay your asking price on this, what if I throw in that, that I don't think you value all that much? If we throw this on top, then I'll pay your asking price for this, right? And, sh and she said yes, immediately. She said yes. Uh, I had talked with her before about that hat. Actually, I pointed it out and said, well, that's interesting. She said, yeah, well, I've got one. Hers is actually better that she uses. It's got a ponytail hole that comes out the back. And those are the ones that tend to sell a little bit better. So this isn't that one. But she was telling me how much she likes it. I've got another one. This one is still new with tags. So obviously, she doesn't want or use this one because she's got another one she likes and this one's just sitting there still new with tags and she put it in a garage sale so there's no attachment to it and new with tags better for us right so i threw that in there they were asking three dollars for it which, which is fair and i got it for free and so added value so are we going to make a ton off of this little impromptu garage sale stop no but we got some cool stuff to put in the store for sure stuff that i i thought was neat and it, it was a great chance for me to sort of like i said break down a garage sale so i'll put up the uh, the listings because i've already got these things listed both of the skulls they have pretty good sell-through rates and they're worth a little bit they're certainly worth more than what i paid not a lot more than what i paid but they're worth a little bit more we'll make a little bit of money the badger pelt it doesn't have the legs or the claws on it. That would make it better, but it's still very nice. And so we'll make a little bit of money on that. Actually, I already have a watcher on that. The hat's going to sit around for a little bit, but I don't mind 
sitting around on a free hat, right? Um, it, it'll just go in the hat bin and eventually I'm pretty sure it will sell. Those Hoka's, they're a little bit worn, certainly on the bottom, but there is still some life in them. And that's such a sought after brand. We're definitely going to make more than $10 off of those. And actually on the way out the door, I saw there was a little free shelf section. I picked up this book and uh, this book's in fantastic condition and actually multiples have sold. So I think we'll make a few dollars on the book as well, pulling that out of the free pile. So we're going to make pretty decent money. We paid $60 for everything. We ought to get that out of the pelt and then everything else is going to be profit. So happy with how that went and happy that we were able to break that down a little bit. If uh, you've got some tips and tricks about garage sailing, about negotiating, leave them down below and everybody read the comments because there's often very good information in there. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, you know, comment down below and uh, give me a thumbs up. That's always helpful. I sure appreciate that. If you're not subscribed to the channel, a lot of people that watch these videos are not subscribed. So go ahead and take care of that. It's free. Just click the button, hit the bell, and that'll let you know when we put new stuff up. And speaking of new stuff, I'm going to be on a live tonight. If you're watching this day of on Tuesday, I'm going to be over with Cat the Nurse Flipper, George Antique Nomad, the other guest on the show tonight with me. Uh, George is fantastic. He knows everything. So come on by. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to be tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern. Usually goes for a couple of hours over on Cat's channel. So come on over, say hi, and until then, we'll see you.